Hi, it's Sue. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm just making a short video um, in answer to a question I received. And the question was how I attached these pages, these signatures, to my journal, which is a um, repurposed Reader's Digest cover. And I'm saying that the, um, the person who asked the question realised that there were no threads showing on this side. And um, probably as a newbie, wondered how to achieve this look. And I have to say that um, I do this most of the time. I don't particularly like to see the threads on the spine. Um, on this one, which is a soft cover journal, you can see I have shown the threads here. I have stitched through to the soft cover and I did that because the threads basically hardly show and with it being fabric it was an easy way to um, achieve the end result. So yes, that's probably one of the only journals I have that I've done that. Um, this is a journal that I'm using at the moment and it's a very basic journal using the book cover and again um, oops, I've done the same on this one and I've just added a false spine to hide those threads and I've actually covered that with just a plain fabric. So taking this book which is the one um, the reader saw. You can see I have just added a piece of card down the spine, which I've glued to the spine, having already added my signatures to that card. So what I do, this, here's another Reader's Digest cover that is ready to go. And in this one, you can see I've used the um, end papers to form pockets. I managed to keep those and they were in pretty good condition. What I have done, however, is reinforce the spine on this one. So there is a piece of card added onto the spine. And um, I, I believe this measures an inch and a quarter. And I've been very careful to make sure that it sits within that center. That is to say, it doesn't cover this little indent here, which would, um, you know, stop the book opening properly, I believe. So that's reinforced. And then what I do is I take another piece of card, and I love these. These are uh, real estate agents, brochures, and they're quite um, sturdy. I've used this one to do several of my journals. But basically, I cut another piece the same size as the, um, it's actually the same size as this, the end papers, um, which is the same for this reinforcement piece. That's added after I've covered the spine with fabric because in this journal, again, I didn't want to see the writing along the spine, so I've used fabric and I've stitched that on. Then I've added the reinforcing piece. And the next step is to measure this piece. Now, I could cover this and I probably will. I could cover it with, if I cover it with paper, I'd probably go with something in these colour schemes, the golds or greens, or possibly even tea dyed paper. In this one, I used a piece of card, quite thick card, so I didn't cover that, I've just left that. But, as I say, I, I would probably, because this has got all this um, photo showing, I will cover that one probably. And what I do is then work on this, and I measure, for a three-hole pamphlet stitch, I measure the center and mark the center. And I measure roughly about an inch, inch and a quarter down top and bottom. 
Okay, so I've marked the centre, I've drawn a line across the centre, an inch and a half from the top and an inch and a half from the bottom. And I've just placed the ruler across. I'm using, in this journal, two signatures. So I need to space those evenly across this spine piece. So mine measures um, one centimetre in the first cross to the second and that spaces it evenly across. So I hope you can see that. I've marked that in red and I've gone down and followed those markings for the centre and the bottom section. I've added a T for the top so that I know that that is the top. Then what I do is I take another piece of um, paper, a scrap of paper, I've used the book page here, and I cut a piece. It really doesn't matter how wide that piece is, but you need to fold it so that you get a centre. And that centre line is where you want to transfer these, the centre center spot here, the top and the bottom. So what you're doing is, this is ready to pierce some holes into your signatures. And these holes you will place in the set. These markings will um, show you where to punch the holes through the center of the signature. So I've done the same. I've added a T or top on there so that I know that that is correct, that they all line up, okay? They line up across. And then, take one of my signatures. What I do is I find, take that out, find the center of my signature, make sure everything is the way I want it. You know, if I've got shorter pages that they are positioned correctly, just go through and do a quick double check, make sure all your pages are the right way around. <laughs> I've been caught out before with that one. Um, and um, once you're happy, you've got it all lined up, it's a good idea to use some, you can use large paper clips or I've got these, bulldog clips, whatever, and add those Use those to hold your signature in position, okay? And then you take this piece, line it up with the top and the bottom of your signature, push it well down, make sure it's in the right spot. And I actually use an old paperback for this. Um, I'll just show you. So this is an old paperback, it's been used to punch holes and all sorts. So what I do is I sit that down into the centre of the paperback, make sure everything is lined up here, so it's well set up. Then I use my owl to go punch or uh, pierce the hole right through my signature until I can, you actually feel it go right the way through into the, um, to the book page beneath. Okay, and you do that three times. For the top, the center, the top and the bottom. And I keep the paper clips on, take that off, until I am ready to add that to this spine piece. Okay. And then you add your signatures to this spine ex exactly as you would if you were going directly into the book. And it's up to you. You can finish the thread off within the center of the book or what I often do is finish it up on the inside of this card. So you don't even see that. It's just like an ordinary reading book. Okay, so once you've got your signatures attached to this piece, 
like so. That's how it would look. They'd all be married up. And I generally work from the back forward uh, when I'm adding signatures to the spine. Then that is attached. It is ready to go into your book cover. And what I do is I, ad I adhere this to the book cover, like so, pushing it well down, making sure you line it up with the underneath, which is easy to do when you've got your signatures attached, um, and um, using a good strong wet glue. I've used this one. I've also used Fabri-Tac, which is quite strong, or fabric glue, I should say, it's not Fabri-Tac. And I've also used a, a good white glue. Um, the important thing is to, once you've attached that spine in, is to make sure everything is level. You can take these off then. Push the pages well down into the spine. It's all level, married up here. Push it down. And what I do is I um, make extra sure by pushing down between the signatures. So between each signature, I would go along that spine piece and push it down. You can use a ruler to do that, whatever. I generally just go through with my hand. And I will leave that like that wedge between a couple of large books until I know the glue is dry. And that's it. That's how I um, attached these three signatures. And it really is quite simple. So long as you get your um, signatures attached to the piece of card nice and straight, it fits in really well and you don't see the stitching on the spine. Okay, I hope I've managed to um, explain that clearly. Um, I'll add a few links below of um, YouTube tutorials about adding your signatures and that might help too. Okay. Thanks so much. I'll uh, see you in the next visit, uh, video. Bye now.